Knock, knock. <laughs> hey, boss. Uh, here to see you. Heard you wanted to see me about something. What's uh, what's up? Oh, well, hey, Mike. Good to see you. Come on in, pal. If you don't mind, go ahead and close that door behind you. Come have a seat. <laughs> you, you make it sound like I'm getting fired. <laughs> Well, as you know, Mike, we don't actually like using the term fired. We find it quite aggressive. Holy crap, am I actually getting fired? Well, Mike, you know, the bear market's been tough on everybody, and uh, I guess you could call it some downsizing. Here at CoinMarketCap, there's just no need for a green candle maker anymore. Uh, so who's going to take my responsibilities? Who's going to make the green candles? I, I don't know if anyone else here that even knows how to make a green candle on a chart. Yes. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, yes. Precisely. Nobody here at CoinMarketCap can make a green candle, but doesn't really matter, because none of these crypto projects can make them either. Okay, well, it's settled. I, I gotta start a new chapter of my life. I, You know, the bear market's been tough on everybody, but I just want to tell you, thank you so much for this opportunity. I've really enjoyed uh, working here. Oh, uh, oh, Mike, well, one more thing before you go. We're going to need you to go ahead and turn back in your crypto influencer pin if you don't mind. Or even if you do. Easy boy. Don't forget to subscribe and become a member of the Bit Squad. As a Bit Squad member, you have the opportunity to win a Nano Ledger S along with three Litecoins for the month of January. Just make sure to subscribe, like, and comment on all of our videos in January for the maximum number of entries. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel, Bit Squad. Thank you for joining me tonight. A quick reminder, if you guys haven't signed up for the $25 free in Bitcoin, make sure you guys do that below. It's the Voyager link. Should be the second link on the video description. Make sure that you guys do that. So hope you guys enjoyed the intro. I thought it was pretty funny. Of course, I always think I'm funnier than everybody else does. So maybe you hated it. But uh, here's the thing. That's really a thing that's going on in crypto right now. I made a little parody of it, but we got a lot of downsizing, a lot of companies that are losing employees. That's definitely one thing that's going on we're going to talk about today. We're also going to be talking about Microsoft accepting crypto payments. We're going to be talking about Russia and the ongoing saga with are they about to make a big move in cryptocurrency. And then at the end, I'm going to be talking to you guys about something very specific about Tron. As you guys know, I'm going to Nitron later on this week, but there has been some FUD floating around or I don't know, is it FUD? We're going to take a look at it. It involves the Tron Accelerator Contest. A lot of people are saying that Tron has just basically been trying to put the screws to people on this. We're going to take a look at whether or not that is true. Well, first, guys, we're going to take a quick look at the markets. It's not good today. Market cap is back below $120 billion. Bitcoin dominance rising at 52.8%. We were so close to getting under 50%, and now we're going in the opposite direction. We've had a huge pullback from Tron. I do expect another run, though. As you guys can see right now, Tron is back up to about 23 cents. You can see on the chart over here on the right side, you can see it has had a small recovery, and I actually expect that to continue. I'm expecting a pump for the next two to three days on Tron. I don't think it will go back to as high as it was before a couple of weeks ago or a couple of days ago, but I do think it can pump back up in between 0.028 and 0.3 that's based on the ripple chart before swell it had a large pump and then it dipped and then it slowly started pumping up over the last few days never reached that initial pump number though i think that's what we will see all right guys let's take a look at something that has been happening like crazy it is downsizing in the bear market you know, when things are good, you just feel like your money's never going to run out. And we've seen this from companies such as Steemit, we've seen Shapeshift, Consensus, and now we have another victim, which is Blockfolio. It seems like it was just such a short period of time ago where there were Blockfolio memes everywhere, people with red eyes, and waking up in the middle of the night, checking my Blockfolio like an addiction, and now no one wants to use it. So it is a free app. I, I'm not exactly sure what the revenue model is. I don't think they have ads on there, but uh, I do know that it hasn't been good for people that have been checking their block folio for this entire year. But they looked around at their competitors and saw that Delta only had 12 employees. Blockfolio had like 40, so it was time to trim some of the fat. Very unfortunate if you are one of those people that did lose your job in that, but I think we're just gonna continue to see this the longer this bear market drags out. 
even if we're in accumulation right now it still feels like a bear market and it will because every time we go up to about three uh to about four thousand we get knocked back down but you see that with accumulation stage up and down a lot so until we have that true hopium that comes up that pushes us back up over maybe 5k i think we are definitely going to continue to see these projects just realize and these companies realize they just can't hold on forever and keep paying people what they've been paying them all right, very quickly want to touch on this story from Russia. If you remember last week, we talked about Russia possibly putting $10 billion into Bitcoin to get around U.S. sanctions. In the video, I said regulations a bunch, but I meant sanctions, and that was their plan to be able to do that. Now, a lot of people came up and said, we don't believe this story. We think it's fake news. You are fake news, sir. But now we have a press release coming out from January 9th saying that Russia is actually planning to heavily focus on a digital economy and does this have anything to do with the statement that was already made uh, about maybe they're using this to get around u.s sanctions i'm not really sure but russia really sees an opportunity here if you if you don't know the history of the united states and russia russia was the soviet union was a huge superpower in the world at the time there were two superpowers the united states obviously and russia or the soviet union and once the soviet union fell Russia went through a really bad, I guess you'd call it a recession, just not good financial times. And at that point, they lost their status as a superpower. Now, I don't know who the person who comes up with the labels of who is a superpower and who is not, but Russia really delved into darkness and it was a really rough time for them. And so they've started coming out of it and it seems like they've been playing chess with other countries trying to improve their status. And it makes you wonder if this is true and they see cryptocurrency as truly an opportunity to really get back to the table with the likes of the united states and now china as a superpower could digital currency be the thing that propels them forward we've seen it with julian assange and wikileaks when he was actually when, when wikileaks was told they could not have their credit card transactions processed anymore at that point they started taking bitcoin and that made julius assange i don't know if he's one of the richest people in the world but he's mega rich because he was taking bitcoin payments a long time ago but kind of like i said in my last video if russia is going to not only take legislative steps but also investment steps into bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies it's most likely they're going to do it over the counter which isn't going to really affect the overall crypto market cap they're just going to be buying from someone else who already has them and it's not going to be recorded on an exchange i seriously doubt they're going to be using exchanges but i do think this is a story that we do can need to continue to monitor to see russia's involvement in cryptocurrency so a fun story that i found from my friend andy from the coin boys aka producer by the way um he was actually on microsoft trying to make a payment for something and realized that you can actually add money to your microsoft account now with bitcoin and so sure enough I went to the Microsoft website, boom, there it is. There's a whole tutorial on how to add Bitcoin uh, to your Microsoft account. So if you are a gamer, then you want to purchase collectibles through Microsoft or whatever it may be. I may sound totally out of my element. I'm not a huge gamer. I do like to play Madden, but outside of that, um, I don't buy collectibles and trinkets and you know all that stuff online, but no judgment if you do. I understand it's a big thing, and if you do, you can do it through microsoft now and it is important to note that this is through bitpay so bitboy is, or uh, bitboy that's me i'm bitboy bitpay is actually their processor here so if you're not a fan of bitpay then you know maybe this isn't a big deal to you but i think that the more people that see the legitimacy of a company like microsoft accepting bitcoin uh, i think eventually the blinders are going to come off people and they're going to come back to these markets Okay, guys, let's get into the main thing I want to talk about today, which is Tron and their Accelerator Contest. Of course, I'm going to Nitron this week, so I'm very excited. I'm very excited about Tron. Tron was pumping this previous week. I was very excited about it. And uh, then we got this story coming out, and it made me, of course, my first thought was like, oh, God, just not another scandal in Tron, right? We already had the plagiarized white paper, which Justin Sun still claims it was not plagiarized. It... It obviously was there was proof or evidence that it was i think that it was i'm not holding against them i'm just saying what are we doing going forward with tron that i think is the most important thing and whether or not they came to that same conclusion about that they plagiarized it or not they've also decided the same thing they're moving on and moving forward so of course when i saw this headline the, my stomach kind of sunk like oh please this is not what tron needs right now and you know then it hit me 
this could just be FUD. This is what FUD is. FUD is something that you read and you immediately start to think something negative about that project. Even if it's one of your favorite projects, it's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. If you take each one of those words, you have fear, which means you might be in something that's a scam. You have uncertainty. That's like you just don't know the future of the crypto markets. And then you have doubt where you hear stories and you start to doubt the leadership behind some of these projects. So I went and I started looking and there were a lot of complaints. So basically the Tron Accelerator contest was where Tron was offering uh, a lot of money to or one million one million dollars uh, in prize money to dap developers that could come from ethereum or other places and come build on tron i believe i'm not a developer but i believe tron is also built on solidity so there's a very easy go back and forth between ethereum developers and tron developers now we also have an ethereum developer uh, forest from the hashoshi youtube channel coming on tomorrow night at 7 p.m eastern to talk about um to talk about uh, developing on Tron and what that looks like but Tron held this contest and there were a lot of complaints there were people that said that the grand prize winner did not even have any records of them even existing and people thought that it was almost like the Walton chain thing where they gave away money to one of their own employees as as a, a winner they also said that there were several dApps that did not win that were actually the originals and some people that came in and basically copied that code and then some of the the mimickers actually won they all there were also complaints about the structure of the prizes uh, which i think out of all of this might be the most legitimate beef that anyone has with this but they said that you know the prizes the, and the way that that money was redistrib or was going to be distributed was also changed and there were other complaints as well so today tron actually released a response to all of these claims so let's take a look at tron's response okay one of the complaints was tron changed the prizes and the prize structure after the contest ended and like i said this to me is the most legitimate beef out of all this because you know when you're running a contest that's just not what something you want to do what they did is they changed the number of winners from 56 to as many as 108 and then they responded and they said that what happened is they got an overwhelmingly large amount of responses to this contest and if you know anything about development apparently it's very easy to basically reskin ethereum dApps and put them onto tron like we were talking about earlier so because they had so many submissions they weren't actually prepared with a team and yes this does not speak great about it but they didn't dedicate enough people to this contest so at the end of the day they decided that they were going to uh, decrease the minimum prize amount given but they were going to increase the amount of winners which you know i mean give and take either way they're still giving out the same million dollars so then Tron responded to the people that complained that the prize money should not be given to the clones or the mimickers or the imposters. They should be given to the original dApps. And because of that, Tron actually had some internal discussions and they said, you know what? We are actually gonna take away this thousand dollar prize from this one winner because it was just a clone of another dApp. So eh, to me, like, yeah, it kind of sucks, but it kind of reminds me of like, I was at a blackjack table one time and I was playing and uh, the lady next to me did not win, but for some reason the card dealer misread her cards and thought that she had, you know, like a 20 when she had a 19. And she was, the dealer was giving out the money and a guy at the table was like, whoa, no, she didn't win. She didn't win. It didn't affect that guy at all. Who cared? It didn't affect that guy. That lady was about to win money because it was a dealer mistake. And I just thought that was like such a crappy thing to do. Like, you wanna talk about white knighting? That's the definition of white knighting. So then we had this mysterious grand prize winner. And there were also some other complaints about some of the logistical rules about being on the mainnet or open source or things like that. And basically Tron came out and said, first of all, the person that they were saying was a grand prize winner wasn't even the grand prize winner. And then they said they went on to interview the grand prize or the $20,000 winner who was the the mystery winner in question and they said that they actually like their roadmap and that they're moving forward i think what a lot of people wanted to see is they wanted to see tron come out and say yeah we just made up that winner it wasn't even a real thing but you see people in communities exaggerate so if you see someone in your community say hey our project won you might take that to mean oh we won grand prize and spread that all over social media and it seems like that's what happened in this case so then you had people coming out and saying 
oh, well, Tron hasn't posted the list of public winners yet. And Tron basically said, what we're doing is we're doing all the background work to make sure that the winners are legitimate before we start sending them the prize money and start announcing that they're the winners. And honestly, I can understand this. As you guys know, I do a lot of contests on the channel. I also do many contests on Twitter. And I'll tell you, on Twitter, I've got to be so careful with just one prize that I may give out to someone to make sure that that person is not a fake account, to make sure that they're the account that they say they are, and, and all these things. We recently did a giveaway for my podcast, Beards and Bitcoins, and it took like three or four days for me to be able to verify everything and send all the Tron tokens to everyone, or all the Tron coins that needed to be sent. It takes a few days. So I can't imagine on this large scale when they've already admitted that they didn't have enough people staff for this contest. And I mean, to me, like the staffing for the contest Contest, on one hand it is a little troubling like okay you know what like they definitely should have uh put a bigger emphasis on making sure they were prepared for this but on the other hand you ever you can't really anticipate uh the call to something that you're doing right i can do a contest on twitter and it gets like 200 retweets i can do the same contest a couple months later and i can get 5,000 retweets or something like that you know you just can't really uh you can't really quantify response until the response comes in so then there was a screening uh, issue where people were saying that the dApps were actually getting screened before they made it to the judges. Yeah, that happens all the time in every kind of contest. Look at American Idol. American Idol, you have, just let's go back to the early days. You had Randy, you had Paula, you had Simon. You had all these people back there that, that were professionals and knew what they were doing, and they were the judges. However... There were also, if you had ever been to one of those live events, I actually tried out for American Idol one time. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. I'm totally kidding. I never tried out for American Idol. But I do know, and I feel like it's pretty common knowledge, that people know just because you showed up there, that did not mean you were going to get in front of Simon, Randy, and uh, Paula. You had to, sh to try out before the tryout. Same thing with Family Feud. I actually did try out for the Family Feud. You don't get to try out with Steve Harvey. You get to try out with some knockoff judge. So there's steps to things. If they got so many submissions, you have to understand there is a screening process. And people that are tripping out, like they're saying, oh, my DAP was so good, it should have won, but it never made it to the judges. If your DAP was good enough, it would have made it to the judges. Sorry. So ultimately, I feel like it is too early to judge the results of this contest as the total results have not even been given out yet. Just because the contest ended on a certain day did not mean that the next day we needed to know every single winner and every single thing that was going on with the contest. You got to give them time to judge it. So I think we need to give them about a week or so. Let's see what comes from Nitron. I think ultimately this is much ado about nothing, as is the case most of the time with FUD. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope maybe that Mike can get a job as a green candle maker again one day, hopefully sooner rather than later. Bitboy out.